there seems to be so little consideration or concern for um, you know, the global impact of what's happening and the global interconnectivity of how we're all participating in this fight um, and really what's at risk. So what would you say a little bit in, in, in terms of that conversation? I think a nice entry point to that is look at where we were only 20 years ago in the response to HIV AIDS in the world. There was no interest in a global response. There was no engagement outside, really outside of our own borders. And we struggled pretty significantly with the response to HIV in this country as well. Um, and we didn't know what to do. This is really different. Um, and what changed is people saw the opportunity to come together. There was kind of a, an enlightenment to some extent that we are a connected world, that what happens in other places in the world are connected to us. And that's a good thing. Um, travel carries viruses, but it also carries ideas. And ideas are moving faster than people right now. And so that this sense that we are one, that we actually uh, must come together, changed the response to HIV AIDS and led to a bipartisan approach that you know, the United States um, gave, provides more resources globally for HIV than anyone by far and is the global leader and we have been in global health. And that bipartisanship around COVID for a national, a global response is there. The Senate Foreign Relations Committee is holding hearings on not only how the US should be structured to respond better uh, in a global way, but how we could support a global fund um, that could be created to respond to COVID. So what people can do is, first of all, in your states and your environments, everything's local. If your community is responding well, if your community is pressuring, if you're getting to the, your local politicians, your state politicians, your national politicians, you can drive change.